Hi there, this is Liz with Mad Law Media. I am going to teach you today how to create a Blu-ray in Adobe Encore CS6. Um, as you may or may not be aware, uh, this is actually packaged with the Adobe Premiere Pro uh, version 7.0. So if you are a Creative Cloud member, you can find that there. Um, even if you're up to date with the Creative Cloud 2015, you can actually still access the um, 7.0 version of Premiere Pro. So um, send me a comment if you don't know how to find that, and I can easily show you how to find it. So uh, we're going to get started right away here. Um, I went ahead and opened up Adobe Encore CS6. Um, you're going to go ahead and create a new project. From here we're going to name it. Um, my husband and I just finished up a documentary called Big Brownie and I've got the files handy so we're going to go ahead and just do that. Um, it's about a brown trout, uh, which is a fish, uh, and the festival that surrounds it in northern Michigan, if anybody was curious. So we're going to do Big Brownie test is what we're going to call this. Um, Right here, you're going to select Blu-ray from your authoring mode, NTSC, and then uh, I'm going to scan through this. This is all exactly what my settings are, so I will leave that. However, you, if need be, can go into this and change uh, whatever you need to change. So we're going to say OK. OK. So we've got a new project here. We're going to start right away, go up here, and we're going to name it Big Brownie Test. Uh, I find that if I don't do this right away, I forget and then have to go back at the end and whatever. It's just easier to do it right while it's in front of you. Next up, we're going to go into the project menu right here, uh, or the project bin, and we're going to right click and say import as, and we're going to import a timeline. So at this point, you have hopefully already exported um, your video and your audio from um, Premiere uh, using Adobe Media Encoder. That's that's what I use. You can do whatever you want. You can export it straight out of Premiere if you'd like, but um, I find that to be uh, the easiest so that I can keep working in Premiere. So anyway, um, really quick, I'm going to open up Media Encoder. I'm going to show you um, I've got a, a dropped in a file right here. Um, from there, I would recommend going to Format and changing it to the MPEG-2 Blu-ray option right here. Um, it's good quality. Um, you can change whatever you need to change in here. It immediately gives you um, pretty optimal bit rates for a Blu-ray, so that's nice. Um, I also prefer a two-pass. I've, I've had much better luck with that than with the one-pass. So. Um, and I'll change this to 23.976. We've got uh, this ready to go. You do your media export. Then you're going to see that it will come up as, uh, let me get to the files right here. So uh, these are the two files that you're going to come out with, um, an AC3 and an M2V, and that's what uh, Encore really likes to work with, so that's why I'm recommending it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can use multiple other file formats as well, but um, this is what we'll be using today. So we're going to go ahead and click Open, and uh, you can import these as separate assets as well, but when you import them as a timeline, it immediately creates your timeline instead of you having to take that extra step to go in and create a timeline. Um, so I would, I would recommend doing that. So while that is processing, we're going to go ahead over to Photoshop and create a menu. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I have opened up a still image. This is actually the menu that I used originally for whenever I made the Blu-ray the first time around. So this is a still from our film. Um, I went ahead and added a layer to the background um, and set the blend mode to multiply on the photo. And I added in this uh, title, that's the title of our film, Clever I Know, uh, and set that to overlay as well. So now we need a button that people can click. Um, we're going to just go ahead and do play all. Um, and we'll grab this 
put it there. I like that. And then we're going to change the blend mode of this to overlay as well. Gives it a cool look. And that's it. Um, I was actually kind of shocked at how easy it is to create a button um, using a Photoshop file once you bring it into Encore. So um, here we go. You can see we've got our play button um, and it's ready to go. We're going to hit save and that's it. So let's hide Photoshop. Um, come back here. Everything is processed. We have our video that... Uh... Cool. So that's it. Uh, you can see the file plays it's there good uh, it's also not in italics anymore which indicates that something is being processed so yeah. these are video audio obviously this is the blue one is your timeline so when you come down here um, you can see the whole film is there I had made chapter markers in Premiere and you can see that it actually brought all of the chapter markers in with it whenever we made the timeline so, and if you click on it and look up here, you can see that even the names that got pulled from Premiere are, are all there. So that's awesome. Next up, we uh, have the timeline ready to go. So now we need a menu. So we're going to import as menu. And we're going to go back to that file that we just created in Photoshop. And that's in disk stuff. DVD design first play open. This is opening the menu that we'll be using. Ta-da! Same as what we just saw in Photoshop. So you can see that this red icon here, that means that this is a menu that we are looking at. Um, you, you need to make this into a button next. So you're going to find your layers panel and if you don't have it already open, you can go to Window and select Layers. And that's where you're going to find the layers of your menu to select what you want to select. So um, here you can see Play All. Um, that is the button that we want to uh, make. So what you're going to do is select the, the open button that's to, furthest to the right. Um, I'm actually not really sure what that is square would be called but uh, you see where I'm talking about here and now when you look here you can see that there is a green box around the play all that's awesome that means that it's recognizing it as a button so um, what you can do is click back on the menu click on the play all you'll see that it's actually already labeled exactly what your layer here is labeled um, what we're gonna do link we want to set that. So we're going to go to Big Brownie, Final Export, Introduction. And that is our first chapter marker. The plan for this was to show you how to do a first play. Since there's nothing else on the disc besides the film, it doesn't really make sense, sense that you have to go to the menu to play it. Pop it in, it should play immediately. So as you can see here, um, next to the blue, uh, icon is a tiny little circle with a play button in it and that means that it is first play that means that when you pop this in the first thing that's gonna play is your timeline not your menu now if you want the menu to play first you're gonna right click on it and you're gonna say set as first play and as you can see the button moves or the the little um, play icon moves so we're going to go ahead and, and go back and set this as the first play. So um, the last thing that we need to do for this, uh, as I said, this is a pretty simple setup, is click on your menu and you want your end action to go back to your play all button. Now what we need to do is check and make sure that this is working correctly and you can do that by going here and say check project so you can see these are all the things that your um, system is going to check to make sure that the uh, blu-ray is going to actually play correctly so as you can see here this is indicating that there's an issue with the timeline because it's the blue icon 
Um, and the problem is that the end action is not set. So that means that when somebody is done watching this film, um, it's not telling it yet to go back to the menu. So the settings here, when you click on menu that we just set, so this is basically when you click play all and the menu knows that you're done playing through the timeline and knows to go back to the first play. Playing the timeline first, we also need to set an end action. Okay, so we've set that. Let's go check the project. Okay, no problems. Great. So, the last thing that we need to do, um, I'm going to do another tutorial later on about how to burn this in toast. Um, however, it's pretty easy um, if you know how to use toast. So, what we're going to actually do is build a folder. I have had a lot of complications with trying to burn it through Encore. Um, so, I use toast to burn it. Um, and all you need to do is create a Blu-ray folder, which I've done. Um, you can also check your project from in here, by the way. Uh, so we're going to create using current project. Um, we're going to save this to wherever it is that you have all of your files saved. So we're going to go back to here, choose. Um, this is right. Uh, decide. This is right for me. You can decide which one you are using. Um, and then you're going to click build and once you hit build it's going to save and then it's going to build your disk for you and once it's built it will be in that folder that you saved it to and from there you can go into toast and open it up and burn your blu-ray folder and it will recognize all of the files that are in there and should be easy peasy so, um, look for another tutorial on toast if you're still confused about that, but otherwise, uh, this should get you going to make your first Blu-ray, um, in Encore. So, thanks for listening!